Hey guys, Magnus Robert here, bringing you another video. So this one we're going to be doing another Tap Tap video, and of course, uh, Halloween is now coming to a well. It's not coming to a close anytime. Well, it's coming to a close soon. But Act Three is out. We've kind of got all the stuff. There'll probably be a takedown. It looks like it's going to be the takedown item is going to be a big giant, a big giant worm. We're going to get. Um, we're going to get. I I think we might get a character. Uh, one of those little um, flying things, but I can tell you that's not going to be in my top 10 characters anyway, so uh, there's no point waiting for that, because it's going to be non-playable if it is added, so um, yeah. Anywho, so we'll get into our top 10. So um, well, this is my favourite characters uh, altogether. Now, these are characters that are uh, initially added in the Halloween uh, update. There is Shauna. Now, Shauna was originally added in the Valentine's Day uh, update originally, so I'm going to forget about her. Uh, she because she was originally in Valentine's Day, so I'm gonna forget about her. She's she's not counting, so that's why she's not on my list and top ten. Cause she probably would be in the top five, I I think actually, cause she is quite a big character, well, big ish character. Um, but anyway, these are the characters. Obviously, the show influences my my list as well. It's not just the it's not just the um uh. What was it? It's not just the fact the tapped out thing. It is the show that influences my decision as well. Uh, also, like how good were they on the show? Because if they were a stale character on the show, I'm not going to really be uh, overwhelmed with their performance in tapped out. Because it's not like tapped out brings them to life really. Um, but anyway, so number ten. Now number ten, I got to say it was a bit of a it was a bit of a let's say it's a bit of a toss up between uh, Susanna the Witch and. Um, the uh, Space Marshmallow. However, I've given it to the Susanna the Witch. Now, the reason I've given it to Susanna the Witch is because uh, I just feel like she's a tiny bit more interesting than Space Marshmallow. Now, I, I do like the Space Marshmallow because it is pretty quirky, it is pretty cool, and, you know, it is it is kind of cool. So, it would be number 11. However, I think the Susanna the Witch just is a little bit more, obviously, it's that kind of Hansel and Gretel story. I think it's a bit more, it kind of brings it to home a little bit more, if you, if you know what I'm trying to say. Um, and the, overall, I just think she was a bit more of an interesting character, a bit more of an interesting quest line, and her tasks... I think, they're not that much more interesting, but I guess they're, they're as interesting as the Space Marshmallow, really, in my opinion. So that's why I've given it to Susanna the Witch. She was okay, she wasn't amazing, but, you, you know, there you go. Uh, number nine. Number nine, I've given it to the Blinky Monster, this year's Blinky Monster. Um, now, I think it was cool-ish, you know, it was pretty cool. I like it, you know, I like because Blinky himself is a really, really big, well, a big-ish character in the, in the Simpsons. You know, obviously he's this sort of well is the he's there quite a bit you know he's this the idea because obviously burns pollutes the water so much and it, it's affected the wildlife like that um and it, you know it's a funny little character and the fact they've actually made it now into uh, technically made it into a playable character but in the form of like a big it's like a big blinky big blinky monster is pretty cool however the tasks there's only like one task i think is pretty cool it's the one when he's like going around beating his stick uh, all your tasks like you know go for a swim and all that they're not really that amazing that he just goes into the swamp and you never you just don't see him it would and i've said this before and i say it again it would be so cool if he was just in the river so he's just in the river swimming around and i know there'll be an issue of like say oh someone deletes that river it's quite easy he just um there's gonna be a little glitch where he's swimming in the he's just gonna be swimming in the land for a bit because the asshole's removed his river and then he'll just go to the nearest bit of water and swim and if there's no water then shit is task actually tell you what if they if they remove the water where he's swimming then the task ends there you go that's how you went that's how you went and you know i'm trying to think of a solution to the him swimming but basically they got a little animation in the game anyway where you see blinky pop his head up and then he goes down and then he pops back up that's what i wanted the thing to be that's what i think they could have made it so that's why the blinky monster isn't any higher um you know it is a bit of a, a pot it's not that much it's not really that interesting if you know what i'm trying to say so yeah um, number eight is Grave Digger Billy. Now, honestly, I really like Grave Digger Billy. He's got voice, which is really really cool, and it's actually an interesting voice. Obviously, the Blinky Monster has voice, but it's just grunts really. It's not. It's not really voice. Uh, Grave Digger Billy does. He has like, oh, I'm a grave. I'm his cousin, Grave Digger Billy. Um, I like. I like the fact he's got voice. That's my. Fit. That was the first thing I really loved about it. The look of him. He's pretty darn cool. He's pretty creepy looking at the same time. You know, I like the fact he's a parody of Willy. That's 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 my favorite part. And you know, they had obviously Groundskeeper Seamus as well. So now they've got three parodies of Willy, and well, they've got three versions of Willy. I'd like to say in the um, in Tap Tower, which is pretty cool. Uh, and overall, I think his tasks are they're a bit blandish because obviously they they had to kind of create something because he was only really there for a little gag. But I think they've been very good at it, and I think they have been pretty creative. And 
And of course, you don't see loads, but you know, have that one when he's like smacking the ground with a shovel and stuff. And overall, I think they've made they've made this character quite interesting. From like a small, tiny one episode character who didn't really do much, and he was only there for like a little joke. And uh, they've actually um made him really interesting, and that's why he's number eight. So number seven, number seven is Frankenstein. So honestly, I love Frankenstein. I love the stories. When I, I, I always say it's one of my favorite Treehouse of Horror. I've said that so much, but um, it is a really good, really good Treehouse of Horror uh, segment. Just the one segment, you know, the little Frankenstein thing. The bit with um, uh, Frank's dad. I really liked it. Now I think the character itself is also pretty darn cool. I really like it. You know, it, it's um. Yeah, it's pretty quirky, pretty funny. I mean, his tasks aren't that interesting, again. Uh, and his, qu his quest line is okay, though. I do like his quest line. Um, you know, but I guess overall, he's just no better than the characters above him. But I feel like he's just a tiny bit better than Gravedigger Billy. I do like what they did with Gravedigger Billy, though. But um, I have to give Frankenstein just the upper hand. So, number six. So, number six, and uh, this is pretty funny, but I've actually gone with a non-playable character. I've gone with King Snorky. Now... Bit of a weird one, you know, the fact I've actually put a, a non-playable character above a playable character, but I've got my reasonings. Uh, I love the King Snorky segment, the dolphin, the whole dolphin thing. It's my favourite Halloween segment, Treehouse of Horror segment. I probably would say it was my favourite. Um, it's not my favourite Treehouse of Horror episode overall, because the other two segments weren't amazing. But the dolphin one is probably my favourite segment. I did give the, I remember, I think, my favourite Treehouse of Horror is the one with the Ned, Ned, uh, werewolf the um uh, the thing with stretch shooting and clobber girl and i forget what the third segment was but they were the two segments that's my favorite trees of horror but my favorite segment was the dolphin when the dolphins took over so adding king snorky was really really cool and maybe that's the reason i put him above the other characters but he's so rememberable he's so funny and you know he's got a quirky and fun action when you tap him he, you know he, there's, there's the noise the dolphin noise you know and then we see him do a flip and it, it's you know it's not bad anime it's pretty well animated as um a, a person said oh a person said um you know and overall i just think it's a really really cool character and regardless of it having tasks or not i don't think it really matters i think it's just a really really cool character to look at and really really cute to look at and although he's uh pretty pretty um evil at the same time so um yeah number five i've gone with death now death I think it's so cool. Um, I know he was, again, he was a really, really small character in a small gag where obviously Death gives Homer um, his powers for a bit. Um, but he, but I think they've really done, again, They've the same with going into Billy, they've made him into an actual interesting character, although he wasn't before. They've got, he's got voice as well, the I am Death. Now, it's not much voice, but, you know, it's still really cool. It's cool to have, it's really funny how these characters have voice, but characters like Millhouse don't really weird but um you know i think the voice is it makes it 10 times better for so just it just does uh the tasks are pretty cool i actually really like death's tasks they're you know they're interesting they're, there's not much action there but they're okay um and his quest line is really good um <clears throat> but you know overall i just think he's a really really cool character really really rememberable uh you know it's just obviously cool because it's death you know <laughs> what's what's uh, well, what's more powerful than death? Nothing really. Maybe, maybe God. Um, they could add God, <laughs> to be fair. So uh, until they add God, their death at the minute is the most powerful character in Tapped Out. So um, I, I just like it. I, I I really like Death. He's a really really cool and little, not really quirky, but he's just fun to look at. And you know what? He is the epitome of horror. You know. What is the most scariest thing in the world? What's the thing people are most scared of? It always is. It's always something, but it's always a result of death. Let's be honest. I think death's the most feared thing. They say like sp people are more spe scared of spiders than they are death, or something like that. But I honestly, I feel like, like they're only scared of spiders because they're scared they're gonna get poisoned or they, you know, something like that, which will result in death. But anyway. Number four. So, number four is Hugo. So, I've gone with Hugo. Now, the reason I've gone with Hugo is honestly, I. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I like that segment. <laughs> I like that Treehouse of Horror segment. Um, no, but I did. It was a pretty good one. I like the idea of having a you know a twin brother. It's pretty funny, like an evil twin brother in the attic. It's it's quite, it's little, you know it's a little funny thing that people say all the time. Or or you obviously you're the evil the evil twin. We must have got rid of the the good twin. Uh, you know it's a joke. And they took that little that little joke that sometimes people have, or you know your parents and stuff. Um, 
And they made it into an actual thing, and I think it was really funny. Um, I really liked the Hugo thing. It was really f- weird and you know, quirky, and the fact that he's got this evil brother who eats... Does he eat people? I'm, I don't remember that one. To be fair, I don't remember it that well as the other ones. But, um, yeah, I really think he is pretty cool. And, of course, he has got a bit of... They are grunts, his, his, his sound. You know, little little grunts. I mean, so it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, his quests are... He, interesting to, uh, to a degree however they are most of them are involved inside the simpsons house but i mean it, it's not a terrible character i do really like it i think he is pretty cool obviously compared to like, other characters in the game none of these are that good but um uh, in, in terms of halloween i'd say he definitely deserves the number four spot but the number three spot goes to booberella so booberella is a pretty big character in the simpsons anyway she obviously appears over the she's not like a directly a halloween character and she's only in halloween she appears in different things as well and she is this like celebrity she's this obviously this um well she's a celebrity who, who i guess is a bit of a goth maybe you know dresses up as a vampire <coughs> but um you know really funny really a bit, a bit of a crude character but you know a pretty cool character overall um, in The Simpsons and in the Tap Out. In Tap Out, I mean, what they did with her, it was interesting to a degree. Um, it wasn't like overly exciting. It was, it was okay. Questline was was okay, but I just think it's, you know, the cat, the, the character itself is pretty big, and I thought what the, what they did with the Questline was pretty fun. Um, you know, I don't. I'm trying to think. She was a hundred donuts, right? I'm pretty sure she was a hundred donuts. Um, and honestly, it's not a terrible price for for a single character, considering you get um yes she is with hundred donuts. Considering that you do get like you can get like um this stuff. Well, just look at the funzos. The funzos are s- so se- one of them seventy donuts, right? And um they don't even have tasks. So for thirty donuts more, you're getting a full character, an interesting character, and one with tasks. So um you know I I do think that she was pretty cool, and honestly. Yeah, she, she does a number three. So number two, number two, I have gone with Kang and Kodos. So I grouped these ones together because although they are different characters and they are separate characters, they're basically the same, really. <laughs> I know they say like one's male, one's female. I'm pretty sure Kodos is meant to be female. I don't know. But anyway, they are overall really, really cool characters. Now they appear in near enough every Treehouse of Horror episode. They obviously have that little joke where they're like, oh, we didn't appear in this Treehouse of Horror episode. Now they are aliens in the simpsons and they they are i'm pretty sure they are canon so they do actually exist in the simpsons world they are from a different planet the rajillian planet and they are so cool and interesting these characters are really really cool i really like them they're like the um the watcher in marvel you know they're they're the character that never really interacts with the humans only in like non-canon but they're just cool overall and I really like them. Really, really cool characters. I don't know really what else to say. Now, their quests in The Simpsons tapped out. So, honestly, uh, there's some of their quests which I'm not so happy with. Um, I do like some of them, like with the UFO, the Victorian UFO. I think that one's a pretty cool task. You know, there's some ones that are a bit bland. To be fair, there's that one with Bart on the bike with Kang. I really like I think that's Bart's task, though. But I really like that task. That's so funny. You know, the whole ET thing. And they just got, they have got some really, really funny tasks. Really, really funny ones. Um, Kodos is, I, I think Kang is a little bit better than Kodos, but ultimately the same character, really. But, um, yeah, really cool. And it's an interesting way to get them. I like the way you unlock these characters, obviously. You have, you buy a ray gun, and then you have to shoot down a ship. It's such an interesting way of doing it. And that's what I think is really unique about these characters and makes them a little bit better, is there's a different way to unlock them. And, of course, it is still donuts, really. You obviously have to buy the ray gun, which is donuts. But it's just, it's just a cool way of doing it. And I really like it. However, my number one spot goes to... Let's come have that drum roll, please. It goes to Mod Flanders Ghost. So, I couldn't really give it to Kang and Kodos. It was a close one. I was debating whether or not to give it to Kang and Kodos. But ultimately, I'm giving it to Mod's Ghost. First of all, the character itself. Mod in The Simpsons is really big well i wouldn't say she's that interesting she wasn't really that interesting until she died her death though is one of the most interesting episodes there is it's a really interesting you know concept and it was kind of like whoa the simpsons have actually killed a character off because the simpsons i always saw it anyway or at least i thought i was until i saw this episode um it's a fun little lin you know a little uh circular 
plot so a circular narrative in each episode so obviously you only have one story in each episode and it doesn't really carry over and nothing really carries over however they did the death and it carried over and obviously she was dead that was it she was gone throughout the whole Simpsons the rest of the Simpsons she was no longer there and I think it, the character itself is really 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 cool and although she wasn't that interesting before she was okay you know the, you know a strong Christian woman um, you know with a family and two kids and, and you know husband and it's it's like your sort of atypical atypical I guess you're atypical American maybe a well atypical Christian anyway atypical Christian woman you know she's there and they made her so more more interesting and then they brought the stuff in with her ghost and stuff and you know praise land and all this and little different storylines after she died and it was so good it made her character good and the fact she died is the best thing that happened to that character as as, as sinister as that sounds it made the character interesting. And um, now in Tapta, let's go to Tapta, back to Tapta, we have this, instead of just making her a human, they made her a ghost. Now, I'm okay with that at first. I was thinking, oh, they could have maybe added a skin. They don't need to add a skin because before she was a human and she, well, but, well when she was just a living human, living person, she wasn't interesting, let's be honest. No one cared. Um, and they made her interesting with a ghost, and that's why I think they should have kept they because she was only really she was only really relevant after she died, and that's why I like the ghost. However, the tasks cool as shit. The one with haunt haunt Springfielders, that's such a cool task. I love that task. Um, other tasks, um, well, I don't really know all of them. I can't really think of them all off by heart, but they are pretty cool. Her quest line is brilliant. I mm, can't really say. It. I love her quest line. Um, her. Uh, the way she's introduced, obviously, she's she's, sort of, she's kind of plumped on us in, I think it was 2013? Yeah, 2013. 2013. Um, 2014? 2013? I think it was Yeah, 2013. Uh, she was sort of introduced to us in 2013. She kind of ran the event for a little bit. I liked that. Uh, overall, she was a really, really cool character. And honestly, the best character uh, that Halloween has given us, or Tree House of Horror has given us, in my opinion. But anyway... Don't let me tell you what to think. Think your own opinions. Uh, anyway, but I've tried to argue my opinion. I hope I have. But please give you me your opinions. Tell me who your favourite character is. Tell me which ones you like, which ones you... Well, actually, just tell me the ones you like. Give me your top five, your top three, or your top ten. At least give me one of them, please. Top three, at least. Come on. Please, come on, guys. Do you want top three? Talking to you, Ted. Top three. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next video. Goodbye.